All right, let's go over this warm up. <clears throat> what is the range of correlation? So remember, correlation has to stay between a number that's between um, negative one and one. So negative one to one. The numbers can never go further than negative one. You can't have something like negative 1.25. And no, you can't have something like 2.8. Have to be between negative 1 and 1. Number two, what type of relationship does R represent? R represents a linear relationship. Number three, below is a data concerning the mean height of Kalama children. A scientist wanted to look at the effect that age had on the mean height of the children. What is the explanatory variable and the response variable? Okay, remember that explanatory is the x because it helps us explain what is happening. And then the response are the results. So what are the results? Those are in Y. So the explanatory variable is age and the response variable is height. Okay. All right, let's now calculate the R value by hand and also using technology. Take a picture of this and I'm gonna show you guys about using my graphing calculator. All right, so if we use our graphing calculator, I use graph and calc 83. I'm going to press clear and then I'm going to go to stat and I'm going to press edit you go up to the top of your list or you want to highlight L1 so it's an I have an iPad so you can just highlight L1 and just press the up key until you get there press clear and then enter clear okay and then I'm going to do the same thing for list 2 now I'm just going to go ahead and put in my numbers, 18, enter, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, then I'm going to enter 76.1, 77, 78.1, 78.2, and 78.8. Okay, remember from lesson 2.4, we talked about how um, you need to first um, do the diagnostic. Make sure that is on. So the calculator commands for that are second zero, second zero, second zero. It's going to bring up the catalog, and you want to look for diagnostic, which is a D. And you want diagnostic on. Whoops. We're supposed to do it on the home screen. Let's try that again. Second zero to get the catalog diagnostic on. Press enter. Okay, now it's on. Okay, now I'm going to press stat calc. And then you're going to look for a linear. You do have like regression there, three, but uh, I want to focus on. Um, Five and eight. If you guys look at look at five and eight, they're pretty much the same. And I think in class I used uh, number nine. Five and nine are exactly the same. You'll just notice that A and B are switched. So just pay attention that slope is in front of X. So I'm just going to press this one, and then it tells us to put in your list name. So now I'm going to press second one, second one, give me list one. 
then comma um, L2, second two. You can close the parentheses if you want, you don't have to. Okay, so here this gives me a, this gives me all the printout we need. So I'm going to take a picture of this. All right, so now we can go back to our nodes and we can calculate uh, our value by technology. We'll do it by hand. Is 0.967, and I'm going to round 7. Okay, this is my R value. Okay, remember for regression r, there is a formula, so let's do this by hand now, r equals 1 over n minus 1 times the summation of all of the x values subtracted by the <coughs> make a mistake, you just move it over and then we can just go back and write I forgot to multiply that by the standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y. These values Alright, so let's go back in the list and let's go get some information that we need. Um, I want the standard deviation of So a couple of things, let's write this out. We need Sx, and then x bar, and then we also need standard deviation of y, and the mean of the y, or the second list. Okay, so let's go and do that. Now we already have the information here, so you can just press stat, calc, one for our stats, and here I just want L1, so that would be second one, or you can also press second stat. Let me show you that one. And it has the names, okay? Okay, this is what I wanted. So there you see X bar and SX, which is the sample standard deviation, which is the one we want. And again, why do you want a sample? Is because we don't have the whole population. Those lists are just a couple of children's heights. Okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing. Stat, calc, one of our stats. And then here, um, I just want L2. So I'll do it a different way. Second, two. Okay, and then there's our information. All right, let's go back to our notes. Okay, so for SX, I got uh, 1.58 in X bar to be 20. And for the second list, we got the average to be 77.64 and the standard deviation to be 1.08. Remember the end value is how many people have you have on this list. So there are one, two, three, four, five people. So n equals five. Okay. So then we just create a. I like to create a, um, a chart. Drawing my chart. Okay, so I want the age, so I'm just going to write, this is my first list, so this is like my x, I'm just going to write those numbers, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. And the second list we had in yellow, which is the height down here, 76.1, 77.1, 78.1, 
78.8. Okay, in this list, I'm going to subtract each of the x values from the mean. Okay, so that's going to be, um, nope, this one. 18 minus 20, 19 minus 20, 20 minus 20, 21 minus 20, and 22 minus 20. All right, so we're going to get some numbers here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we didn't need this one. And now I'm going to, <coughs> let's use a darker color, uh, y values minus y hat. So that would be 76.1 minus 77.64. Six point one, seventy six point one, seventy six point one, seventy six point one, and let me show you guys again how to use this list aspect. Super helpful. Okay, so we know it's much what I do. All right, I'm gonna go back to my list. <coughs> so I'm gonna go to stat, edit. I'm going to use an empty list, so I'm going to go up to list 3 and press clear. Okay, and with L3 highlighted, I'm going to press um, L2, so second, 2, and you can see the blinking there is where my formula is, and I'm going to subtract it by the mean, so I'm going to have to just write that, minus 77.64. And what I've done there is my list now is kind of <coughs> doing all the subtraction for me. I can just copy down those numbers. So this will be negative 1.54, negative 0.64, 0.46, I made a mistake on those. So I copied the wrong number there. Did you guys see that? And I was like, oh, I'm going to subtract those numbers. They look right. Okay, those numbers look better. Because when you subtract a bigger number by a smaller number, you get a positive. And then this is 1.16. Okay. Do I have any space over here? I hope. Awesome. Okay, what we need to do now is we're going to take our two lists. x minus, and the i just means that i is the number in the list, so it's the first number in the list. You're going to take that list and multiply by this list. So all those in underline we're actually going to multiply. Okay, so I should have I should have done that trick to the next list. So let's just do the next list. You guys want to play cooking fever? Okay, so I should have done in this list. Press clear. I should have done uh, x i. So that's the first list minus the average, which was twenty. And those are the numbers we got. And why do I want those two numbers? Because I can go to list five, press clear, right? And now I can multiply list three times list four. So second three times second four, which gives me L4. 
Okay, and then I have these numbers. Let's take a picture of this one. Okay, now I can go back here. And now it's actually multiplied these numbers for us. So negative 2 times negative 1.54 will give me 3.08. Uh, positive 0.64, 0 0.56, and 2.32. Then this, if we add that number up, so this is let's 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 see what tell you what it done so far. I don't know if this is helpful. This is in list one. This was in list two. I made a mistake. This is L. This is L five. We put this one in L three, and this was list four. I kind of mixed them up, but okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do one bar stats for list five. And why I'm doing that, so I go to go to the home screen, second mode, clear all that out, stat, calc, one of our stats, list five, so second five. And the reason why I did that is I wanted the summation. I wanted it to add up everything, which gives me 6.6. .6. Do you see that? The backwards EX, the second one on the list on the left column, so 6.6. .6. So the summation of all of that is 6.6. .6. Okay, let's go back to our formula now. Let's do our trick. No, let's try again. It's close. It worked. All right, let's just substitute all this in now. So R equals uh, one over five minus one times one over standard deviation of X is uh, 1.58 looking up here, times SY 1.08, times our summation, which was 6.6. .6. Take a picture of this, go to my calculator to show you. So I'm going to multiply all of the numerator in green, and then we'll multiply everything in yellow. So, or you can just do one divided by four. So that's the n minus one, five minus one is four. Okay, this one I'm gonna use double parentheses. I'm gonna do, um, that's my numerator, and this is my denominator, 1.58. Um, um, That's cool, it highlights it red. I wanted um, one point zero eight. I'm going to do one more set of parentheses. Never hurts. And then you put one right here. Second insert right there. Okay. I know, crazy amount of parentheses. I just don't want to make a uh, mistake here. That's all. And there it is. 0 0.967. That's the number that we wanted. Okay. So that matched our calculator by hand. That was question number four.
five, the slope regression um, of a line between x, x height. Um, I'm going to draw a graph. I don't know, it helps me. And you have height here in inches and then arm span in inches. So we're saying slope. So it says interpret the slope in context of the problem. So this is where we need some help because we're going to have to try to do this now by um, context. Okay, so you know, basketball players, how tall you are is pretty much the same as your arm span. But if your arm span is longer, um, you're a highly coveted basketball player because you can defend better. Okay, so slope is a change of y over the change of, let's do it for color, and change of x. And the y's represent arm span is 1.13. Okay, and x's represents the height. Okay, how do you make 1.13 a fraction? You put a 1. So my sentence is, I'm going to write the green part first. Doesn't matter, you can write it. For each or 1 inch change in height so basically everything I just run green there represents the green above it's just those are the units right so I just wrote the green for one inch change in height there is a what there is a 1.13 inch increase in arm span. And again, the word each, you can put in like one inch there. I don't know if that helps. All right. That was question five. Let's do question six. What is a residual? A residual is, it tells us, Our errors. And then how do you calculate or find it? Residuals or formula. So if you haven't already created a formula sheet, here's one of them. Remember, instead of taking AP statistics, we're taking regular statistics. But if you took AP, that would be the actual minus the predicted. Right, so you guys gotta think about things that can help you. Number seven, which scatter plot sh could show the relationship between the two variables? Okay, so you could just, um, how would you describe this one? I'm just, the reason why I'm doing this is it might help you later. Describe is suds, right? What is our shape? Our shape is linear. Anything unusual? Um, no direction, it's, um, negative, and shape. No, that would be strength. And strength, remember, is your R value. So I'm going to say, I don't know, 0.7 or something like that. OK. Let's draw out each of these. So A. This helps me. So if you struggle with these scenarios, draw a picture, a quadrant one of each of those. Speed in an airplane. Okay, speed, just think, I don't know, it'll put a zero to 100, helps me. So if the speed of the airplane is increasing, then distance traveled in one hour. Distance. I don't know, does it tell us? Um, Let's just say miles. So I want to go to Hawaii, I don't know, 3,000 miles. So if I go, if I take a plane and the plane goes faster, 
Okay, you can also kind of, um, if it helps, you can put a line to it and just if that makes sense. And it, it follows the scenario. So as speed increases, then I can go to Hawaii faster. But let's just say I really want to go there. I could take a private jet with a super turbo jets and get there even faster. So this is both increasing, increasing. This is actually a positive relationship. So if I fly faster, I can cover more distance. And here, we're trying to find one that is a negative, so not this one. All right, let's do <coughs> the green one. Outside temperature, temperature. Again, I always put in like 100. Doesn't tell us, but let's just say degrees Fahrenheit. And air conditioning cost, so money. If you have no idea, it's really expensive to run air conditioning. So if it's cold, let's say right now, it's like 50 degrees outside, my cost is also gonna be low. So low, low. But if my temperature outside, like in tomorrow it's supposed to be really hot, so that's 100 degrees, then my costs are gonna be high. So high, high, this is also gonna be increasing. So as the outside temperature increases, air conditioning also increases, this would be a total of a positive relationship, which doesn't match our graph. All right, let's do a blue one. <clears throat> Age of an adult. And the height of the adult. Height. I don't know, let's just say six feet. Okay, so when you're a baby, right? Like my fifth daughter, Autumn, was born. She's only uh, one and a half, two years old, and she's kind of short, but she's growing, right? So when, at young age, she's small, and then she's probably going to plateau, something like this. Whoops, what happened? But the idea is that somewhere in here, it's as, as her age increases, well, you know, it does say adult, so I take that back. Let's see if I can erase this. I'd say adult. So, like, say, um, my brother is almost 50. Um, He's not growing anymore. He's just growing around the tummy. <laughs> so that kind of remains constant, right? So constant or, but that's not a negative. Okay, so remember in multiple choice, don't just um, say the last one is your answer. Actually, they figure it out. We already did green, purple. Okay. Distance travel, I don't know, just say from here in miles to um, school. Maybe school's like 10 miles away from you. And then gas remaining, gas remaining in your car. Okay, so I think mine holds 10 gallons. That's the hard part about stats. You guys are doing these context and then context actually has real life implications. Okay, so I just filled up my car, so I haven't traveled anywhere, I have 10 gallons, okay? But as I as I travel towards places, there's like, it's burning up my gas. Does that make sense? So if I go, I don't know, one mile, maybe I have nine gallons, that's not true, but does that make sense? And so what you're gonna see is if you go very far, let's just say I travel from here to Arizona, well, my gas is going to be very low. It's going to be empty. So there you have a negative relationship. My answer is D. Last one, but your favorite one. Correlation or causation. The number of fire men or fire people fighting a fire and the size of the fire. Okay, so let's let's draw a picture. Okay, so we have the number of fire people, <laughs> firefighters, could be men or women, and the size of the fire. 
Okay, this, this makes sense, right? So let's just say you have a small fire. You would probably have a little, a small amount of people there. But if you have a big fire, I'm assuming you want a lot of people out there to put it out, or your property damage, or you lose breath. So it looks like it has a strong, right, positive relationship. But there might be a strong correlation. Let me write that. Strong correlation. Why? Because if you have a bigger fire, I'm going to write in crazy fragmented sentence, if big fire, then you want um, more fire people, firefighters. But here's where I have to push back. Does the number of firefighters um, cause the size of the fire? Does that make sense? If there's more people there, does that mean it makes the fire bigger? No. So, no, not causation. The number of people there does not cause a bigger fire. So, all right, um, doesn't mean that bringing more fire fighters will cause I'm going to underline that. <clears throat> We've been talking about that one. The size of the fire to increase. Because that would be kind of silly, right? Then you would say, okay, firefighters don't come, and then you have small firefighters, you have a small fire. Okay? All right, so that was our warm-up. You guys have a good day.